What happens when a student gets injured? What do you do? Now, I'm not talking about somebody getting knocked out. I'm talking about the typical bang your shin, get the wind knocked out of you, get your nose bopped kind of injuries that we see with students, especially today with the younger students. So we're going to hear things like, that didn't hurt. You're okay. God, just shake it off. Get back in there. And the problem with that kind of response is that you damage your relationship with the student because you lose the confidence of the student. You're making a traumatic event into a trivial event, and that does not bode well with the student because you break the confidence contract at that point. At least you damage it. And what do I mean by the confidence contract? When a student is in your school and training, they are investing trust in your ability to keep them safe. When they get hurt, they enter, and everybody does this when they get injured, you enter a different mindset. You enter an altered state of mind. So you no longer are using the logical conscious mind. In this photograph, that's the glacier that's outside the water. You instantly, when you're in pain, go to the subconscious mind. In other words, you're not logically thinking anymore. You're in a highly emotional state. So what is said to you and what happens to you has far more long-term ramifications than they do when you're not in that altered state. So the response by the subconscious mind, again, this is not on the logical mind, is that when you say that didn't hurt, the, the subconscious mind goes, yes, it did hurt. It hurts right now. What, what are you talking about? So there's instant confusion because you're not acknowledging what I'm experiencing here. You're okay. Why can't you see I'm hurt? Just shake it off. What does that mean? So again, these aren't conscious, logical retorts to these comments. This is just how the subconscious mind responds to this attempt to make your students tougher. So what can we do? We're going to take primarily this two steps, but I'm going to make it into a four step so that you have a, a, a couple more steps to, to use in cases where the, you didn't see the student get injured or the injury is a little bit more than a banged up shin. So let's just go with the injury that you witnessed. You saw this happen. Kid slips. He hits his head on the floor or he gets bopped in the nose. Number one, top of the list, you have to establish authority and get a confidence contract. Now, what does this mean? Well, if you're in the school and you're the, you're the instructor, you have authority in your mind. But once this injury happens, you have to establish a different kind of authority and here's a great way to do it you come to the student rather than say hey shake it off or you're tough get up you're okay tell them i've seen this before i can help you and what does the subconscious mind respond to that with you have experience that's authority you can help me oh thank goodness that's great see how assuring those words are in contrast to the typical responses we see here's another great one and this is, this is with, with somebody that maybe is hurt a little bit more or a little bit more traumatized and they need a, a stronger establishment of authority and a stronger contract. And this is it. If you listen to me, I can help you. Well, that implies a lot. If you listen to me, I can help you. Because if you don't listen to me, you're going to continue staying hurt. That's the implied message. So do you see how powerful these are as opening lines when someone is hurt, whether you um, know the person or not, whether it's a kid or adult? These two lines are great ways to establish authority and get the contract. Now, this is big. You want to acknowledge the injury and the pain. This is an instant trust builder. I know getting hit in the nose is no fun. That's happened to me a thousand times. In fact, I was just at my son's school helping out with uh, a field day, playing football, and that's exactly what happened. A kid went up in the air, came down, his nose smashed into the skull of the kid under him. The kid under him seemed to be okay, but the kid with the nose smashed was really upset. And that's exactly what I said to him. I know getting hit in the nose hurts. That's happened to me a bunch of times. So that's the trust builder. Oh, this guy knows what I'm going through. Thank you. And then we get to the empathy. It makes your eyes water like you're crying and burns. Why do I say this? Because a lot of times people are, kids in particular, are embarrassed about their response to being hurt. So you want to say that the pain makes your eyes water. You're not doing it yourself. It makes your eyes water like you're crying and it burns. 
And this is this is this is the spin right here. Now you're going to pace them away from the injury. If they're panting and breathing and really upset, you want to get them to breathe with me. You're pacing the breathing. And and this is a great verbal pacing. The good thing is the pain goes away real fast. Now, how do I know that? Well, I told them already. This has happened to me a bunch of times. Your body is already already healing, which is absolutely true. It'll just take a few seconds and then it'll be over. The good thing is that the pain goes away real fast. That's, that's a relief to a student. Again, the student is in an altered state of consciousness. They are receiving what you say as the absolute truth as it's happening. So this is a very powerful technique. The good thing, the pain goes away real fast. That's a relief. In fact, your body's already healing. It'll just take a few seconds and then it'll be over. So now you're, you're saying, okay, I, I, I'm taking over time here. I'm controlling time. In fact, I'm going to do a little NLP time distortion with you without you knowing it and pace you away from this event. So in, in depending on the how upset the kid is and where you think a number is, I typically use seven. I think seven is a very powerful number. So I would, I would say about seven seconds, you'll recover and you'll be fine. Ready? Let's go. Seven, six, five, four, three. And I'm, and I'm kind of in between four and three. You're going to get ready. Okay, here we go. Ready and up. Way to go. Way to recover. You're a true warrior. So, and then I finish with it. You know, we all get hurt and being hurt hurts. Uh, but it's how you recover from the injury that makes the difference. All right. So those, those two steps alone are worth their weight in gold. If we move on to the step three, this is when you didn't see the injury and you suspect it may be more than what it is on the surface. This also, as you're going to see, is a great way to take the pace of student away from the pain. So where does it hurt? My foot. Which one? My left foot. That's that's okay. So now we're taking over this process and we're going to, in step four, lead them to an inventory. In other words, now you've told me where it hurt. I want to take the focus off the pain and here's how I'm going to do it. Uh, which one hurts? My left foot hurts. How does your right foot feel? Um, it's okay. Your left knee. It's okay. How about your right knee? At this point, a lot of times with kids, they'll start to laugh. You've distracted them completely away from the pain by making their mind go to areas of their body that doesn't hurt. If I have a kid jams his finger, I take him to the other hand and I have him go picky, middle finger, index finger, thumb, um, you know, picky toes. And, and then I'll take him down to his toes. Well, do your toes hurt too? And again, at, at that point, typically they start to laugh. And then you go into, okay, well, you're recovering real fast. You can see that the stuff hurts, but it goes away pretty quickly, all right? So ready to stand up? Let's go. One, two, three, up. So there you go. That's how you uh, deal with students that are injured as a professional using what teachers do, and that is the power of words. Let's take a quick review. First, establish authority. Get that confidence contract. Two, acknowledge the injury and pain. Three, ask for specifics if the injury is not obvious and then ask the student to inventory the rest of his body, truly to find out if other places do hurt, but mostly to, again, pace them away from the pain.